So in addition to the linear uh, trend line, you are using your polynomial trend line uh, equation as well to solve for x, which is the concentration of protein. As I mentioned before, you can use the quadratic formula calculator to do that. In this case, you would basically just take this uh, exact equation and plug it into this particular website and solve for x by putting in the absorption uh, of absorbance of uh, the dilution that you have um, by putting in the y value here. The absorbance is going to go as your y and then you will just hit calculate it and it will calculate it for you. You can solve it by hand by all means as long as um, you know what you're doing. So once you have the values, you're going to go ahead and put those in here uh, as part of your graph uh, or part of your table. That's your table two. Table two is going to contain the sample information, so sample one, uh, sample names. So it will have your student unknown, and then it will have your uh, instructor unknown. There should only be two rows, but each row is going to contain um, then multiple columns in front of it giving the different values for the numbers that you need to do. So here this was point six zero five. so I just put that in. So you're going to have the quantification of protein using the linear trend line. You're going to have the quant uh, quantification of protein using the polynomial trend line uh, equation. And then the third column will have the quantification of protein using the combined curve that I have provided you. Um, I wrote trend function to show you one other way that you could potentially look at the quantification and that is through Excel's trend function. Function Here you're going to say trend and the function should pop up automatically. It's going to ask for your y so you are going to give it the y values which are over here the blank corrected uh, absorbances then it's going to ask you for your x and your x value is over here um, which is the protein concentration and then it's going to ask for the n actual absorbance that you're trying to calculate the x for in my case it's 0 0.605 so that's what I will add in and then you do close parentheses and enter um, and once again, remember that you had 10 per, uh, full diluted absorbance, uh, was for 10 full diluted sample. So you have to multiply that entire uh, answer by 10. I will do that now. Yes, not 8, 10. No. Yes, um, sorry you have to put the right information in and then it will give you. So using the trend function, the answer came out to be 5.685. The linear equation gave you 6.5 and then polynomial equation will give you some other number. And looking at the numbers, you can test these equations by using one of your known absorbance, known uh, protein concentrations absorbance and see which one is the best one, which is the most reliable one. And that's the one that you want to then use in the bar graph at the end because that's the one that is going to be the most accurate, so to speak, in actually presenting, um, calculating your protein concentration. For the last part, which is the bar graph, you're not only going to take the data for your group, but also all the other groups. So on this particular sheet, I have this is one of the protein uh, concentration lanes for the student and the instructor and then this is a standard curve this is a standard curve there is a second one over here for student and for the instructor unknown and I'm trying to see if it has a third one most of you will have three so here is the third one for the student and the instructor unknown so you are going to take the dilution, the 1 to 10 dilution, or whichever number it is that falls within the linear range after your blank correction, and you are going to do the same quantification using uh, the equation of your choice from your set, either the linear or the polynomial, and quantify those three different 
proteins, uh, unknown protein samples, and you will have a bar graph with the average of the protein concentrations presented in the form of a graph with added standard deviations on them. And that will be your final figure for the paper itself.